got it. We're good. All right, ready, set. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Always Level Up, the podcast. This is episode number eight, and this is where my guests share their stories on how they level up in business, relationships, knowledge, and health. And today, I have a very special guest, Filipino basketball champion, San Antonio living legend, my brother, Chris Ross. Welcome, brother. Thank What's you up, for brother? joining us today. About time, right? <laughs> we've, been trying to, we've been trying to get this going for for a while. So, man, I've been planning it in my mind for a while, and finally, you know, been able to get you here. You know, I know you're out there in the Philippines, always playing ball, doing big things, man. So, I appreciate you coming in and and joining us. Um, so, let's uh, let's get started, man. Let's talk a little bit about you know your journey um, into becoming a professional basketball player, and uh, you know where it all began, man. Let's uh, let's start from the beginning. So I, I never really had a plan B. It was always like, cause I, obviously I'm the youngest, well not obviously, but I'm the youngest of three, right? Mm -hmm. And my sister and my brother were always athletic. They were always in sports. So I'm six years younger than my brother, three years younger than my sister. And just as far as back as I can remember, I was always in the gym or I was always at the football field being around sports. Cause my dad was in, the Air Force at the time and he was playing sports too he was doing like 35 and over leagues at the, right. at the gym and playing so I as, as far back as I can remember I was always around sports so it was just something that happened like just early on and I, I knew that was what, what I wanted to do I, I was never really into cartoons I was never really into and I was into video games but it was all sports it was everything was sports for me at what at what age did you start playing sports I I started playing like team sports yeah. at four. Nice. I was four, but there was the age group was six, seven, and eight. So the only way I can play was if my dad was a coach. So my dad was a coach <laughs> when I was four years old. Yeah. Right? Man. I was four years old. I was the smallest guy out there. I was playing tackle football at four. Wow. Six, seven, and eight. So imagine I'm four years old playing with eight year olds. So man, that's, that that must have been tough. It, it, it was <laughs> tough, but that's why my mom would never watch the games because I was the smallest guy out there. But yeah. it made me tough, like more more so like being around my brother and my sister. They made me tough because I'm a lot younger. But playing sports at a young age, when I'm four or five years old, playing with guys that are guys and girls that are three four years older than I am, it, it made me tough. So um, yeah, when I when I first started when I was four or five years old. I knew that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, you just had a passion for it. I had it. a passion, man. It was all I ever wanted to do. I, I would go outside and just dribble the basketball or I would carry the football around or I would ask my brother to bring me with him to go play with his friends, even though they're six years older than me. So it was one thing that I knew that I wanted to do just because it was something that attracted me at an early age. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, your son, your sons are your my, Nico's five years old, so around yeah. that around that age, I was like, man, that's all I wanted to do was play sports. And yeah, yeah. Be outside and be competitive. And well, it helps you. Uh, uh, and I don't think people really notice this when you're that young, but it helps you build grit. You know, because right. you're uh, you're so you're so young, you're so small. And there's so many challenges, Absolutely. right, that come from that. But you know, did you ever complain about playing sports or anything like that? I know most like my kids, <laughs> they, right. they hate it in the yeah. beginning. <laughs> so, so with me, it was one thing that I'm like, I wanted to do it. Yeah. It was never, I never had to get forced to do it. It, yeah. was, it was something that I woke up wanting to go do. I fell asleep. I would out, outside all day. Mm -hmm. it, it was a different era back then, right? We would go outside and play. And I was literally outside all day playing. Yeah playing basketball playing football playing baseball and so so what were some of your early achievements like you know growing up and and kind of as you advanced so um 
early on, I was obviously I was the youngest guy on the team, but I was still one of the better players. Mm -hmm. And we would win championships early mm -hmm. and um it was just something that i really got used to i was a sore loser when i didn't win the championship i was i would cry and i'm still like that now like, that's something that's carried over like yeah. when I, if i don't win a championship or if i don't win a game i'm i, I i'm hurt like yeah. i'm a super sore loser like i hate losing more than i love winning right and um but yeah, man, I was I was just always super competitive. I always wanted to win. I was always one of the tried to be one of the better players on the team, and um, it was just it was something that it just attracted me, bro. Just yeah. the, the feeling of winning. The yeah. feeling of winning is it's far better than losing. But um, I, I did come across a lot of losses. I'm mean, everyone yeah. does in life, right? Yeah, so, you got to. <laughs> you <laughs> got to take the L's, man. You got to, right? <laughs> I remember one time when I was, um, I think I was seven, and my boy Chris B was on my team. Yeah. And uh, he, me and him were the best players on our team, and um, in the fourth quarter, he fouls out, and we were playing in the championship. Uh -huh. And I knew once he fouled out, we were going to lose. <laughs> So as soon as he found out, I started crying right then and there. It was still in the fourth quarter. The game wasn't even over, but I started crying just because I knew that we weren't going to win. Yeah. And more so, that sticks to me more than some of the championships I've won because yeah. it was the feeling of failure that really stuck with me and not wanting to feel that way anymore and wanting to work harder and harder and harder to achieve all my goals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so how did you... Uh so how did you focus more on winning and like what it what like what were the next like you know I mean did that championship did y'all end up losing it? So we lost that championship. <laughs> so you were right. <laughs> yeah, we, we lost that championship. I was definitely right. We lost that championship, but um, there was there was a, that's the thing about youth sports. You yeah. always have an, another opportunity. Something yeah. comes uh, either whether whether it's summer league or whether you're playing football next mm -hmm. or baseball next. You always have another opportunity, but. Um, just wanting to honestly like being around my brother and my sister like mm -hmm. it just it, it's it's a competitive nature that you get when you're the youngest right and have, have something to prove you always have something <laughs> to prove and you want to be better than them and that's kind of what 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 pushed me as a kid and um most of my friends growing up i was always the youngest so i always wanted to compete with them and um, honestly, it's it's stuck with me ever since. So so, <clears throat> as you uh, as you got older, you know what you know. I know I know you you know you played football as well, right? So you're pretty good at that. Yeah. Um, you know, and and you know, at what point were you like, man, all in basketball and like say you know? So, um, in high school, I was a two sport guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I played I actually started varsity as a sophomore in football. Mm -hmm. And I what played, position were you I at? played quarterback and cornerback. So I was, I went from being a freshman. So my sophomore year, I was a starter. I was the starting quarterback. You know how that goes. Yeah. I was literally maybe five nine, 130 pounds, and I'm out there with 18 year old men. Like yeah. when you're eight, big boys, right? Yeah. Like there's a huge difference when you're 15 yeah. from 15 to 18 right yeah and i was out there man i was competing but i, I never really backed down just because mm -hmm. how i grew up i was four years old playing with eight years old so i'm, I'm used to that. you got a heart of a giant right, right? That, right? <laughs> so I, it still kind of sticks with me like i feel like i i always feel like i'm the smallest guy where, wherever i'm at mm -hmm. like if i'm playing basketball and i'm actually now i'm one of the bigger guys but i always feel like i'm the one of the smaller guys and yeah. it's just it's just always stuck with me but going back to high school um actually um i had way more scholarship offers in football than mm -hmm. i did basketball i had around 10 scholarship d1 offers in football um but they wanted me to sign early mm -hmm. um so there's a signing period that happens in november and i still had basketball season to play and we just had come come off of a state championship my junior year mm -hmm. And it was a really big deal because no one in San Antonio had won a state championship in, I think, since 90, like, it had been like 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
I really love like football is really my passion. I love football because it's just a, you you played. It's yeah. so fun. It's a oh, yeah. fun sport. Like practice practice is not as fun, but the games you're under the lights and yeah, it's a different experience. It's a different experience. Man. You got a big man. you got right. a big audience. Right. It's, it's it's a whole nother, it's, it's a gladiator sport, man. Right. And you know it's so it's physical and yeah. you get to test your strength as a man. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying. So I love that. I was uh, <laughs> I, I was actually I really wanted to play football. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I had around 10 Division One offers and they all wanted me to sign earlier, but I told them that I wanted to pl- play my senior year of basketball mm-hmm. because we just come off a, ch- a state championship. I had a good summer. I went to a, a camp with a lot of pros my mm-hmm. junior year summer in LA. So um, they were like, well, we want you to sign now. I was like, well, if, can you wait? So <laughs> out of the 10, I think about five waited for me. Uh-huh. But um, it's kind of like a situation of, like what have you done for me lately so i was playing basketball so football was five months in the past so right. basketball was i kind of fell in love with that so i i, I had one division one offer in basketball mm-hmm. and um i didn't i didn't like the school that offered me so i ended up going to a junior college right and that was when actually during my recruiting process i would ask all the schools can mm-hmm. i do both sports mm-hmm. and at the division one level it's really hard because yeah they're like nah man. yeah you have to you have to really put all your eggs in one basket yeah yeah it's so, a good thing it's a yeah good thing. so um i i ended up going with but i didn't it was a last minute decision mm-hmm. uh end of my senior year of high school is when i finally decided to just stick with basketball nice so, what um let's let's go back uh just real quick you, you touched on the, the state championship oh, man. Yeah. you know a lot of people around you know the city know about you know that that uh that season that mm-hmm. that that championship man talk about it man talk about how y'all got there the journey to get there you know what happened and uh you know you know how you felt afterwards so john jay at the time we had been a pretty much a dynasty in San Antonio. Like we were always from 1989 Mm -hmm. up until 2002 when we won the state championship. We were always one of the better teams in the state, not just the city, but in the state. So and that's surprising, man. The West Side, of right, school, right. right. Just a small, like, <laughs> we're not we're not recruiting any guys. This is everybody right there off of Marbog, right. from Jones Middle School, Rayburn, and Pease. Like, yeah, those three schools, and we were always one of the better teams in the whole. St- not just the city, like we were the best team in the city, but we were always one of the best teams in the state. Right. That's awesome. So, as youngins, as middle schoolers, we would we knew that we wanted to go to Jay and play basketball. Yeah. And that was probably one of the reasons that pushed me to basketball as well, because just how proud the the basketball program was at Jay. But um, like all of my guys that that I grew up with, we were like, man, when we get to Jay, we're gonna win state. Like we right. we talked about it as middle schoolers because that's- we saw the varsity team going to state and losing. They would go and lose, and we we're like, man, when we get there, we're gonna win. Man, that's crazy. We're go- when we get there, we're gonna win, and we're at the time we're like. 9, 10, 11, 12 years Bro, y'all old. created that, man. We manifested that. <laughs> yeah. We manifested that, man. Honestly, we really did That's manifest real. that. So um, fast forward to my junior year, um, it was a really up and down season because we some guys weren't eligible, some guys got hurt, mm. and we knew this was our chance to win it because the year before, um, they lost in the game to go to the state we had a whole new team and we knew that we had a chance because mm. just growing up like i said you had the, you had the squad we had we had yeah. everything we needed we're here <laughs> and we knew like this is the year we're gonna it's win time. state. yeah this is the year we're gonna win state so um it was a rocky start to the year we we lost some games that we shouldn't have lost we didn't even win district like, yeah no. we didn't even win district man. wow like, a lot of people don't know that we were we were i think we were third place in district so um we finally got healthy at the right time, like right around the playoffs, and we kind of breezed through the playoffs. And then when we get to state, um, there was a team that we would the two previous times that Jay went to state, mm-hmm. we lost to Dallas Kimball. Oh yeah, and they were there as well. But to, before we played Kimball, we played a team called um, High Tower, and they were ranked nationally. They were like number five in the nation. They were stacked like. They were all. They literally looked like an NBA team. Like really? We were out there shooting around, and we're all kids. They're all, they're all dunking, bro. When I tell you, like, we're all kids from like Marbach area, and we're like, we're all small and 
scrawny and just happy to be there. And we look up, we look across the court, and they're like six ten, three hundred pounds, six eight, two six. Like they're all, they look like men, bro. So they're like some football players. Bro, they literally, they look like a whole like a football NBA team. But we were like we just weren't scared. We just yeah. knew we were gonna win. And we ended up playing. We ended up beating them easily. Like we yeah. ended up winning by fifteen or I eighteen points. And then when we got to the finals, and we played Dallas Kimball, and this is like, this is our rival. Like they Your beat us, shit time, right? Huh? They beat us. They beat us the last two times. And um, it was a close game the whole way out. Um, and then l- the legendary thing happened where we were down. Well, I think we were down one point, and they had a free throw and they missed it. I got the rebound with five seconds left, dribble through people at half court, I throw up a Hail Mary and it goes in. And this is at this is at University of Texas State yeah. Championship. This is on national TV. This is on this is on Fox Sports. And literally like the it was twenty thousand people watching and more watching at home. And it was just it was a great like literally it just it was like someone from the heavens put that ball in. Cause it went straight in bro like no backboard no rim just swish straight in (laughs) that's amazing the crowd went crazy i just remember being on the bottom of the pile and every ever since like that was kind of the beginning of of everything that was the beginning of everything because we were after that we were treated like we were celebrities honestly yeah that's yeah, awesome. Celebrity, so I uh, I remember you know watching that. I, you know, it's funny how I caught the last glimpse of that game. I was at my friend's house and um, uh, the game was on, and and that you, you hit the shot, man. You hit the shot, and and ultimately it goes in, and right. and they're like, "Whoa, Jay just won!" I'm like, "Did that just happen right now?" <laughs> I thought it was some kind of commercial or something, and uh, uh, it was it was really really impressive to see to see that. From a distance, but even before I knew you, it was like, it was like man, that, bro, even that was like, incredible. To shot. this day, if whenever I watch it, I get chills. Like, yeah, it, I get, I really get chills watching it because it was, it was an outer body experience. And like, did you get nominated for an SB award? I was, I was nominated for an SB. I, I got invited to, um, to the SBs. It was held in LA. Um, How was that, man? How was that experience? Was it was awesome? a crazy experience, man. <laughs> they put me up in a, in a, in a, in a hotel on Hollywood Boulevard. It was a sweet man. I'm 17 years old, mm-hmm. and the suite that I had was so plush, like white everything. They had gift bags in there for me. All the Tom Brady was staying at the hotel. Like all the top stars were in my hotel room. We had a there was um, the host of the ESPYS was Samuel L. Jackson that year. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So he um, he he guy. did an after party at our hotel, and literally everyone was there, and long story short we had a good time. <laughs> we had a really I had, one of the I, most memorable nights ever <laughs> i was 17 years old man and i'm in there with like just all these pros and all these like amazing athletes and i'm just there like in awe and i had a good time i was invited to the i was invited to the playboy mansion <laughs> nice. they had a um they had a, a, a boxing match there was uh-huh. boxing matches in the back in the backyard so uh-huh. um it was on ESPN, and I was there. I was sitting ringside, and across from me was Hugh Hefner. Oh yeah, yeah. He had like <laughs> ten playmates around him, and I'm just looking at like I wasn't even watching the fight. I'm just like, man, this dude is really—he's real life. He, like, he's a player. <laughs> he's, he's real life, bro. Hugh Hefner was literally across the ring from me with ten women around him. But that was that was an experience. The, the Playboy Mansion was—it was a nice experience. Man, that's crazy. That's awesome. You know, I think uh, you know, with all that hard work and, and dedication, you know, led up to to, oh, to that victory, man. Absolutely. Just sticking with with your people and and growing together. I mean, a lot of people don't see that work right. that gets put in early on and, and the consistency. But I think ultimately, you're having fun doing it. You, you know, you create your own luck. There's no such thing as luck. That's right. right. You create your own luck. So. That's right. Um, so so after that, man, like after you, you know that happens, you go through this experience, and it's like, what next? You know, like right. what, what's the next move after that? So, like, literally, we're overnight celebrities, Mm -hmm. and um, I just knew since then, I was like, man, I think basketball basketball is my calling. (laughs) Yeah, I think this is it. (laughs) If if something like this happens I love football, but... Basketball is my calling, so 
um, like I said, I, w I ended up going to a junior college. I went to a small school in, um, in East Texas called mm -hmm. Panola College. And um, it was a, it was an experience, man. The the co the college was in a town called Carthage, Texas, mm -hmm. East Texas. Super man, like man. <laughs> <laughs> Confederate flags hey, flying it's, it's around. Got a scary out there. You know what, like, I'm, what am I doing out here? <laughs> Confederate flags, and it was an experience. And um, I was actually I actually was I led the nation in assist and. Um, so I got a lot of attention from, yeah. from colleges, um, but I didn't like any of the schools that, that wanted me to come. So I ended up going to another JUCO mm -hmm. junior college my second year. That was in Waco, yeah. McLennan Community College. And um, that was probably a better fit, huh? It was, it, <laughs> it, it was, it was as far as the city, yeah, yeah. as far as the city. Basketball wise, basketball is going to be basketball wherever you play. Yeah. But as far as city goes, it, it, like that was, it was more of what I was used to. <laughs> and then um, I ended up, after that, I ended up committing to signing a scholarship to Marshall University. Yeah. So I, I played my, my Division One basketball at Marshall University. Um, and w and was, that, was that a challenge, like, you know, after you, you win a championship and, and maybe you think, or I don't know if you thought this or not, but... Um, hey, I'm gonna go D1 right after right after high school. And it was, then it's like it was you don't, and then it's like, man, it's kind of humbling. What, absolutely, because the the summer league teams that I played on, we it was full of pros. Like I played with Lamarcus Aldridge, and um, he was obviously all world. And um, AC Law is a guy that I played against in the state championship game, and he went to Texas A&M and ended, ended up playing with the Hawks and. It's a thing where you're like, man, how come all these guys on my team are getting Division One offers and I'm not? Mm -hmm. I'm just as good as these guys. I feel like I'm just as good as these guys, but um, it was a process, man, and it was it was it was humbling, and it just made me work that much harder. Right. Um, seeing guys around me um, be successful and and getting all the things that they want, it just made me work that much harder. So. Um, that was one of the things that actually pushed me because I wasn't getting the looks that I thought I deserved, mm -hmm. and um, it, it just it, it lit a fire under me, and I just worked that much harder every day. I was trying to perfect my craft. I was working on my body. I was watching what I was eating, and um, it, that I, I feel like that was the turning point in my career as far as like seeing guys around me get all the attention and me not getting the attention and it made me just work that much harder and right yeah and you know after so after you, you transferred to marshall how many seasons you play there and then i played two i played two years at marshall um we we were not a really great team mm -hmm. um it, we we're a, a team in transition but it was it was an, definitely an experience um just being there it's it's a football rich school mm -hmm. um, randy moss went there um chad pennington byron left which guys that played in the nfl like that are hall of famers um the basketball wasn't high on their mm -hmm. on their radar but we we kind of turned the situation around there but we were all under the radar we were under radar school um and my ultimate goal was to play in the nba and we didn't win as much so we didn't get the attention mm -hmm. so um i didn't get the i i had sometimes i had i had a scout come watch me and that was it mm -hmm. like he just come watch. he told me he liked my game and told me to keep working and that was it so i didn't i didn't get the nba looks i wanted but i knew that it, the the train didn't stop there i knew right. that i wanted to still play and um so after i had I had an offer in Finland, a couple offers in Europe, and I had a couple offers in the Philippines. And I knew ultimately that the Philippines would be somewhere where I can start a career because for one, I'm half Filipino and I've never been. Uh, my sister and brother were both born there, but before I was born, we moved back to the States. And it was always some, a place that I wanted to go just because half of my roots are there. Right. And every time my mom would go, I just never had the, the time because either I was in school or I was playing summer ball. Or, yeah, yeah so it's I a never, long flight right, and you got to right. be there for a while, right? You've been, you've been, you've been. So it's definitely, it's like a 24-hour flight and you don't get over jet lag until like the first five days. So. Right. So that's going to be a long trip. It's a long trip. It's a long trip. But ultimately, I, I ended up signing in the Philippines and I feel like it was 
the best decision of my life. Like, yeah. So how? So once you once you signed to the Philippines, what was uh, you know, I think this is this is the beginning of a new chapter, you know, um, and and you're getting into the you know doing what you like mm-hmm. at a higher level, um, but you know there's still it's still like it's your ground one, right? You're back. You're back to you're back to the beginning of, of a new level. So you, like you got to prove yourself all over again, right? So how do you got it? Like how do you get through that and and get to for one for one flying to a new country being like. My mom's as Filipino as they come, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she, all she has is Filipino friends. All she watches is Filipino channels, and I felt like that was all I needed. Like, I, yeah. like, shit. Man, I live in the Philippines yeah. at home. Yeah. Like the, we got some family right, out here. <laughs> right. So, when I get there, it was a complete culture shock. Like, I had no clue what I was getting myself into. For one, right when I get to the airport, my team is supposed to pick me up and they're late. Like I'm literally sitting at the airport for two hours Man. with my luggage just outside waiting for them. And um and it like that's just the culture of the Philippines. Like they're never on time. <laughs> More so because the traffic it's the worst traffic in the world. Yeah. I sat in traffic going to my place for it took me maybe an hour and a half to get to my place, which was less than ten miles away from the airport. Um, it was just a culture shock, just figuring out how you can adapt to that situation and become the best you could be. And um, it, it actually made me, it actually made me a stronger person and a better man, just being out mm-hmm. there and being on my own and yeah, adapting to the situation that I was in. Yeah. Because it was tough, man. It was tough. You don't get the food, the same food you get. Right. You don't have your parents taking care of you. You don't have like in college, you got there's you're on a you're in a program Mm -hmm. they're like you got to be here at this time to work out you got to go to class at this time you got to go to study hall at this set schedules it sets schedules but when you're when you go into a whole new country it's you have to figure everything out on your own Mm -hmm. like so you have to manage that and then on top of that you know i know there's a a large uh, poverty rate out there right so that's like a whole nother experience over there (laughs) you're either rich or you're poor and not a lot of people are rich so it, it was tough, man. It was, it was, it was one thing that I did that I I lived I lived that life for my first year or two just to become one of them, right. do what they do, eat the food they eat, do what they do. So, so humble beginnings all over again. Humble right? beginnings. So. I was I was literally staying in a um, in a boarding house where. I can touch the walls like this. Yeah, sounds like a jail cell. Man, like damn near, damn near jail cell. I could touch the walls like this. I was in a bunk bed. I was right, in the bottom yeah. bunk. Right um, where some, somewhere I used to stay. <laughs> community bathroom. It was like it was tough, man. Like can can only use the the air conditioning at certain hours. Yeah. Dang. So I had to go to like just to get internet. I had to go to like um, they call them like computer houses. Mm-hmm and or internet cafes is what they call them that was where i went to go get on the internet and um it was tough man but it, it actually shaped me to be as good out as i was going forward because right. i just i just kind of jumped head in into that culture and just made myself one of them so so um you know what made you believe you know that that being there was going to provide you the uh, the opportunity and, and the the growth that you're looking for to experience what you really wanted you know ultimately you're a champion right so, so you want to win so one thing about the philippines is it's a it's a really poor country you've been there mm-hmm. but the people are the people are the hap- i feel like they're the happiest people in the world with they they have the least but they have the most right right they have the least as far as material things go, but they have the most as far as spirit, heart, as far as what's inside. So, and they love basketball. Like they love basketball. Like, bro, when I tell you they love basketball, there's people in the rain playing outside and either sandals or barefoot. No matter where you're at, like you where if you drive half a mile you'll you're gonna run into a court with people playing barefoot people playing in sandals every half a mile there's a court and people are playing and it's different because most countries outside of the united states are they're big soccer countries but in the philippines it's all basketball they're all about basketball and they they love their basketball and the league out there they it's the first it's the first league it's the first professional league in asia Mm -hmm. 
So they've been around for, I think this is year 40, I think they've been around for 45 years. So just going there and seeing the league and, and being in the stands at first, it, it was something that I knew that I wanted to do. And just because their passion and love for the sport, and um, I knew that if I worked hard that I could get to the mountaintop of that of that league. And um, it was definitely a process because it started out rocky. Mm-hmm. But um, eventually I got to where I really wanted to be. Yeah, so so where is that? Where did you, what did that experience? So, so starting out, it was rocky, man. Like I was, I was, you go through a draft kind of like how the NBA does. Mm-hmm. And I was the third overall pick. So they had high hopes for me coming in. And um, it didn't start out well. Like the team, obviously if you're a high draft pick, you're going to a team that's not very good. Mm-hmm. So there was so many problems within that team. And I felt like I was playing well, but they weren't really invested in me for some reason. Mm-hmm. And during my first year, my rookie year, I was traded. Like mm-hmm. just they just let go of me. And I was actually playing really well. And um it was it was a uh, it, it brought me back down to earth because I felt like I was the top pick and I was playing well. And then I'm like, why would they just give up on me? Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like I was doing well, the team was winning, and they just gave up on me. They just traded me. And then I found out that it was just, I mean, it's it's a professional league, so it's all business, right? Everything's business. So I just, it kind of just flipped a switch in my brain to where, all right, this is how I have, I have to work. I have, this is a business. It's not a game anymore. It's not just fun. Like, mm-hmm. growing up as a kid... You do it for fun. Yeah. You do it for passion. You do it for fun. But when you're a pro, it's business now. Yeah. It's not personal. It's not. It's not. Yeah. So it, it, it's all business. And I just had to flip a switch and treat it like that. So right. um, I treated it as so. I, I got up in the morning, started working my tail off and um, just tried to become the best player I could because I didn't I didn't like the feeling of being traded. I was a top three pick and then they let go they give up on me in the first year right and i was like man let me let me figure this out and i had a lot of talks with my brother Mm -hmm. and he was just telling me like man if you want this to be your livelihood you have to show up and show out that's right and so i just i i turned it up another notch but i was getting after it i was working out heavy working on my body eating right being in the gym damn near all day getting it in so that's a, that sense of rejection fueled you right Man, that, that, that added fuel to the fire it like, was you know, honestly bro it was honestly a thing to where like fuck, like damn y'all giving up on me <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> i'm like, gonna show you <laughs> bro I, i've been one of the best players in my whole life ever since i was four years old i was playing with eight years old and i was still one of the better players on the team right and my first year as a pro you're giving up on me all mm. right i'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna show you what's up <laughs> you mean, you messed up now <laughs> I'm, gonna show you what's up. I'm gonna show you what's up so when i got traded i went to a different team and the coach there actually he he had the second pick in the draft i told you i was the third yeah. pick and he yeah. had the second pick in the draft and he passed up on me and drafted another guy uh-huh. but he ended up being my coach my second year and that kind of had i had a chip on my shoulder from that too i'm like all right you passed on me i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you what's up so i ended up playing with that team for like four years and i was i was probably we're a new franchise and i was probably one of the better players in franchise even till now is one of the better players in franchise history and he traded me (laughs) but he literally traded everybody like he made trades for four years like like I had new teammates every month right. and I was the last one standing. Uh-huh. So when he finally traded me, I went to the team that I'm with now where I won all my championships. And um, it's funny because every time I, walk, I run into that coach, he does commentary now, like during mm-hmm. the games. And I'll run into him either before or after the games. And he's like, Chris, the worst mistake in my career was trading you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, because I already know. Like, I, I knew that once you traded me, I was going to be like, yeah, all right, I'm going to let you go. Like, I, I, who who likes rejection? Who, Nobody. Who, who, who likes not wanting wanting to be wanted? You know right, what I'm saying? Exactly. So yeah. I, I used that shit as fuel, bro. And I was in, like, I went from them giving up on me early to now being one of the better players in league history honestly right, just right. not trying to 
to my own horn, but yeah, I'm, no, uh, it's, it's real, man. You, those, are, yeah. those are real accomplishments. <laughs> so I, 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 my resume kind of speaks for itself as far as like being ranked among the greats in the league that I play in. So it, it's it was definitely a journey. It started out rocky, but I, I righted the ship, and but it was all through leveling up. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? That's it's right. all through leveling it, up it grows, and, baby. And, and grinding and staying ten toes down and just getting to it and and, and working. So. So what, so when do you when did you get your first championship? So my first championship didn't come until I was so I've been playing for I'm a 13 year pro now so my first championship didn't come until my sixth year. Mm. So my sixth year in. And how many years with that team that you that you had got the, the third team that you got? So I, I've what been. Team, what team was that? Was that the uh, new team? That team that I that I got? It's San Miguel Beerman. The Beerman, so, right? So the beer. So San Miguel is like a. It's a corporation that's. It's huge in the philippines like my the owner of my team is he's a billionaire right he's a billionaire he's cool dude most humble guy in the world but he's a super business savvy like the league i play in is all it's not like the the nba mm -hmm. where all these rich owners buy a team and it's san antonio spurs and dallas mavericks there it's all products mm -hmm. so Every team is marketing. They use it as a marketing tool. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's it's really a marketing tool for for their businesses. So um, I've been with the San Miguel Bearmen for since my sixth year, and I'm so I've been going on seven, going on eight years now right. with them. And they're the they're the all time winningest franchise in in league history, and we've added eight championships to that. So. Um, but it, it's it's a team that they literally changed my life as far as just my my basketball career because like I said everyone was yeah. Yeah, like I got traded after Eight. my first year then after three years got traded again when I got to this team we started winning and literally changed my life. It's like it's like they betted on you right? They, yeah, they, 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 they were all in on. They were all in on you like this is our guy. We're gonna right. we're gonna. They, you, were all they in. gave they went all in on you. you said, they I'm gonna give you keys. all I got right. They gave me the keys. Bro. <laughs> they gave me the keys and I took full advantage. But that's one thing you gotta. You can, you can be put in a situation, but if you don't take advantage of your situation, then mm -hmm. then what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So by by what year with with the Beerman did you um, did you get your first championship with? Them? So my first year we didn't win, but second year we won, and then we won um, five straight after that. Yeah. So um, and then we we didn't win a year, and then we won two, and then we won another one. So. Um, yeah, it was. It was get, you, you get MVP. I got I got two Finals MVPs. Um, I got a, a Player of the Conference. They do they. It's called Best Player of the Conference, but mm -hmm. it's like an MVP. Right. So. Um, so was that was that like that sense of achievement that 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 thrill that you've always chased after since you were a child? Like, man, you're back at it. You got it again. Like, man, was that? So so growing up, it was like I was always probably the MVP of my team. And then when I got to be a pro, it was like teams are give people are giving up on me. Why are y'all giving up on me? I'm, I've always been the MVP of my team. Right. And then it took me six, seven years to finally win an MVP, and it was like, all right, this is where I'm supposed to be. Right. Like I wasn't, I wasn't surprised because yeah. I knew what I could do. Yeah, yeah. That 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 winner was in you the whole yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's right? always been there. So I I was never surprised, but it was like it was gratification because, like, all right. This, this hard work that I put in when I flipped the switch of being playing the game for fun to now it's a job mm -hmm. now all this hard work that I put in is like yeah it's counting. I'm, I'm back I'm back I'm I'm right here where I should be and yeah. it, it took longer but that that journey was beautiful man like sometimes yeah. you don't you don't you don't think about the destination or you don't think about the end goal you think about the journey and mm -hmm. the journey is what's fun and the journey yeah. is what's gratifying right and that's what like looking back on it like that journey was amazing because i tore my acl and i was out for a year and that's did a it. tough one to recover from. right you yeah. did it too so yeah <laughs> so it was like i don't know if i'm gonna get back as far like back then it was like man you tear your acl it's like it's almost like a career ending injury yeah but i grinded every day man and it was like just to get back to the top it was it was it was definitely like yeah that's it hard like, oh, yeah, it was yeah that's not easy it, yeah Man, I think uh, just that grit, resilience, man, just not Gotta quitting, be. man. Like, you just be. like, man, most people will quit, man. Most people will just tap out and say, oh, man, I'll try something else. Everybody wants to try something. But commitment, man, commitment, grit, just going after it, just proving. 
right. proving people wrong and just like man you know who you are proving yourself right because you know what's in you you know and going after that but it's it's always been like from the beginning like since i was the youngest the youngest player on my team is like i know where i want to be right i know i'm not going to give up i know this is what i want to do i'm not going to get like i told you I, I never had a plan b right plan a was to be a professional athlete right that was plan a i right. never had a plan b and you know how you a lot of people tell you don't put all your eggs in one basket no nah, my, <laughs> my eggs are in this basket and That's i'm gonna it. work to get to this so yeah, man, a lot of people will get distracted and they try to do a little bit of everything and they're never great at anything. Right. You know, and, and you know, I still see that today. They lose hope and lose faith in yeah, it, man. but you can't, bro. If you, if you if you really, the the brain and the human, just your body is, it can do so much. If you just put the work in mm -hmm. and you, you have faith in it and you just grind to achieve whatever you want, you can do whatever you want. I got a tat that says, whatever the mind of man can achieve, the man the man can whatever the mind of man can conceive the man can achieve that's right hey that's napoleon hill right there you bro see? <laughs> so if if if, if, it's, if it's a thought in your in your brain you can do that shit, yeah, man. yeah. you can do that shit. yeah yeah hey, yeah i love that yeah. hey that's that's exactly right, <laughs> right. That's, that's what it takes man because you know there's a price for it all and and you know obviously the price that you had to pay was that struggle in the beginning because yeah. You know, I, I look at it, um, a lot of times I relate it to just like a woman giving birth to a yeah. child, right? You know, you, you they go through these nine months, they're right. tough, and then once they give birth, that's the hardest part, and right. then the baby's there, and it's the most beautiful thing, right? right? And it's a, it's the same thing with, with grinding through life, you know? You mm -hmm. you know, you got to go through these challenges to, to, to give birth to something beautiful, Absolutely. man. It's a great experience, and, you know, you see that in your experience from childhood up through high school and then beyond into college and then beyond into professionalism yeah. like man it's, it just doesn't stop but that process to the top is is what makes it you know worth, worth like the I journey said, it's man. always the journey bro <laughs> the journey is always a beautiful thing right? that's right so uh so uh you're at you're at this level now man and 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 it's it's a great level you're at a great level you've been winning you have championships and you know what's what's the next level look like for you Man, it's honestly the last few years have been a challenge just because the pandemic and out there it's they're not dealing with covid well so yeah we've been kind of locked down for the last two years so it's it's forced me to think like what's next yeah yeah and um i've been i've been trying to focus shift my focus to what's next like not like i'm still focused on basketball because i have a, i still have a lot of years left in me right um but it's forced me to think about what's gonna be next. Right, right. You gotta have a plan in place. So I've been, I've been, I've been getting into. I've just been investing a lot and wishing that I got into investing earlier. Because <laughs> I mean, in school they don't teach that, man. Nah. Especially at Jay, like they're right. not teaching you investing and doing this and like. They're, you're going to math class. You're going to. Really, it's like all right. You're, you're you play sports. You're focusing on yeah. sports. You don't like. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about yeah. nothing else. You're going to sports. You're doing sports. So, yeah. It forced me to like, just to think outside the box, and because even even in college at the D at the D one level, it's like, all right, you're a student athlete, but you're really an athlete. Mm -hmm. The the term student athlete is bullshit, bro. Like, yeah. You're really an athlete. Yeah. That's right. And then you're a student next. Right. Because if you're not performing on the court. They're gonna take your scholarship. They should. They should call it athlete student. They just, if you're a student, if you're an athlete at the school, just call it. An athlete. Don't even say student, bro. They because they don't care. They do not care. They don't care about that. So it was. It was always like, for me, it was always perform, 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 yeah, yeah. be at the top of your game. Mm -hmm. But with the pandemic and just being locked down, it, it made me. I, I went back to school. I got my degree. Mm -hmm. I got into investing. I, I did a I did a internship with a venture capitalist out of out of Atlanta. It taught me a lot of things, and yeah. it, I just had to just figure something out. So now, like, it got my brain moving. I, I've met a lot of people that are into the tech world, and mm -hmm. um, it's just something that you really have to do. As far as like like basketball is a beautiful thing because you you can you you meet so many different people and right. you this person knows this person like you just know your network, everyone your, network, ne expands. your network expands but you have to shift that from basketball and now you have to shift it to after basketball yeah. and, and how you're gonna be a, a successful person after after you you, you, you retire yeah. 
So well, the beauty is, is that you uh, you already know success. You already know right. what it takes to get to where you got, and, and and when you go all in and you shift your attention to the next thing that you need to go all in, and well, then you'll experience the same thing. You'll you'll succeed. You know, the path changes, but the grind is the same. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You gotta so just get back to work. You gotta grind. Like <laughs> nothing's gonna. No one's gonna hand you shit. That's like right. you gotta grind. That's you gotta right. grind for it. So. I've been grinding my whole life with getting my body in the top shape, getting my skills to the top level that I need to be. So now once that's over, you just shift your focus to a different level. Like if it's whether it's an investing or tech or venture capitalist or real estate, you just right. you just shift your grind. The grind stays, you still got to grind. It's just yeah. a different type of grind. That's right. That's right. Man beautiful man that's the, that's a that's an amazing amazing story amazing journey um what's uh what would be the one thing the one advice you can give somebody that that you know maybe is you in the beginning that you know is is trying to get through it all what, what's your best advice to somebody out there for me it's like just sticking to the script like success the journey of success is never a straight line it's it's gonna mm -hmm. there's gonna be twists and turns and knots and detours and you just can't you can't let that dream slip away like if if you really put your mind to it like if you grind for it and, and everything there's going to be obstacles there's mm -hmm. going to be obstacles you either got to go through it you got to go around it you got to go over it but keep the main thing the main thing is keep grinding don't don't be de deterred from anything mm -hmm. so because life life happens to everybody life literally happens to everybody and it's not about how it what happens to you it's about how you bounce back or how you react to that situation so as long as you if as long as you have an end goal and you grind to achieve that goal then i feel like you'll be all right in life right? yeah that's awesome yeah and that, i think that's great advice you know i i think you know going on in sticking to your to For your sure. to your uh, a, a goal of achievement that you want to experience. I mean, that that's what produces the result. But because you're when you're committed and, and 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 you love what you do, then going through the challenges just make it part of the process, and you can endure it. So, For sure. man, that's solid advice, brother. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Great, great story. Great advice, man. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. And uh, everybody that's out there watching, I hope you took some notes. Hope you caught the gems. And, uh, you know, remember, always level up, baby. Yeah. If not, rewind it and watch it again. That's right. Keep watching. <laughs> All right. We'll see y'all next time.